All right, welcome back to another quick beginner intro to Substance. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at Substance Painter, and again, we're going to be starting with some stuff we worked on in Photoshop. So here's an assignment we had previously where we're doing a the cover for a spell book. We've got some cool little dragon scales or leaves or whatever's happening there. A metallic frame, there's a gem here. Um, and then the model um, lays it all out like this. So you can see how the whole, how all of that kind of applies to this UV here. Um, jump back to Photoshop. So there's the outer spine. Here's all the inner trim, the cover, the pages, and of course the gems. Um, what I've done is I've taken that model, um, and instead of just having one single UV unwrap, I've separated all the different material areas out into different channels. And we're going to play with those in Substance Painter. So we're reimagining the whole thing. So first, here's Substance Painter. Um, it's open and nothing's going on right now. Um, just really quick, I'm going to play with Open Sample here. And here's like Meet Matt. You can see, even without any models, you can just open up stuff in Substance Painter that, that's already built in and start painting and having fun. Um, so we start with something like that and then drag materials into different areas and spots and waiting um, and we get some cool effects but we don't want to mess with him we want to do our spell book so I'm gonna go file and new and create a new project I'm gonna keep it at the PBR metallic roughness um, the document resolution I'm gonna go ahead and crank up to 2048 again for that 2k and let me go select my file so I've got my FBX here for the spell book that I exported from Blender and I'm just going to open that up. And everything else we can leave the same. We've got an auto unwrap um, for UV unwrapping now in Substance Painter. It's still in beta. I've already unwrapped this, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and uncheck that. But if you haven't done your UV unwrap yet, maybe Substance can help you out. So we're going to leave all that the way it is and hit OK. I'm going to discard the settings to Matt here. And here is our book. I'm going to alt and click and pan around. Um, and you can see that's the shape that I was showing in Blender. Um, and I'm going to draw your attention to the texture set list up top here. I've got, gosh, what, six different material slots here for the metal binding, the pages, the spine, um, the trim, the hide, or whatever you want for the, for the cover. And so just to start off with we're just going to drag some materials onto those different areas and see what they look like now my shelf here full of materials um, and smart materials probably going to be more full than yours um, i've got a lot of stuff that i've played with in the past or stuff that i've created so i've just got a lot of random junk up in here your standard default um, shelf will have just the stuff that substance painter ships with and that's fine you can get more if you'd like through either substance source over here um, and again, we can do that through the Substance Launcher and just go to Source. If you've got money, have fun. Go get some fun, some uh, go get some expensive stuff, or just go for the free assets. Just gonna browse the free. I'm gonna drag one in. Let's see which one will look good in here. Satin fabric. We'll go with this embroidery. Let's just send that to Painter. Looks like we got some cool settings in there, and that might be it. Oh no, I think this leather will be look, look good too. So again, you can get the substance source from here. Um, there's a there's a side panel in Painter itself, um, or there's something called Substance Share, uh, which is a bunch of just fan-made stuff, basically. Um, stuff from the community, not from Substance themselves, necessarily. But that's how my shelf got fuller than yours. So, I'm going to go and find um, just some, some things to throw on here. Um, quickly, I want to talk about smart materials versus regular materials. For now, they don't matter to you. Um, but, uh, later on, when we get more advanced in Substance Painter, we can um, set up our models to know where all the edges are at and things like that. And so things like this steel um, painted, scraped metal, whatever this is, um, will find the edges 
just on that just using the smart materials and and like add the little rough lines that you can see around here um, all right so i'm gonna grab materials and just start throwing them on um, whatever this iridescent paint is looks like it'll be good for gems so i can drag it right onto that mesh or i can drag it onto the um, layer in the set list so the bowl leather that i just got that might look good for a cover You want to be crazy and have your book made of bricks then I mean I guess you could do that doesn't really work for me but uh, maybe that's what you want we can have the book made out of cardboard we'll just use cardboard for the pages just to see what that looks like so you can see with the wrong choices we can get really ugly results um, mix and match and find stuff that works and you'll find you have a lot of fun here so I'm gonna actually try and get rid of the cardboard so I see with my pages material here I can just take this cardboard layer and delete it trash that I'm gonna do the same thing with the spine and I'm gonna get rid of that brick and let me see if I can find something fun to put on that I want to go that small I'm fine scrolling. Concrete, rivets. Iron. Iron might be fun. Let's try iron on the spine. Kind of maintain that metallic look that we had before. I'm going to go ahead and drag that to all the trim and everything else. So we're just going to use iron for now as the base. So that covers all of our metal. We've got our leather on the top. Some really weird stuff for the gems. And I think, I think if I take a wood grain and maybe zoom in on it, I might be able to fake my way through some pages. Got a wood pattern. No, you know, I'm going to use these wood planks. I'm going to try the wood planks here, which has a lot of extra stuff on it, like knots. Yeah, that's that's too rough. Too rough for what I want to do. Try the wood grain. It's going the wrong way. But I can go into my settings here. So I've got this layer selected. And let me just try and rotate that. Do a solid type in at 90. It's at least going the right way now. And I can scale it down. Not too far. Good enough for now. Yeah, so we get kind of a rough approximation of pages with the with the lines in the wood grain. So that's a good starter, right, for just getting materials onto the different material slots. Um, and we can also add extra paint on top of that. So we had a lot of decoration um, back here in the Photoshop version. Um, and if we've got time and patience, you can get a lot of that here too. So I'm going to go ahead and over the top of my metal binding. Is that what I'm looking for here? Yeah, that's the one. I've got extra stuff here. So I'm going to get rid of this steel painted, scraped, whatever I threw on first. So we've just got the iron galvanized. Um, and let's say I want to use a just a different steel. I'm going to use a steel rough, and I can make a new layer here, and then use this brush, and I've got different size controls up here for the for that. I'll pull that down and just paint. It's just painting white, not my material. Now it did. All right, I'm just going to undo a couple times. And for whatever reason, now, now my metal is on my brush. And so 
you can add a different metal and kind of just add some add some scrapes here. You do actual nice, you know, decorations like we did before, or just rough it up. Uh, another thing I can do, I'm going to play with the hide material here, and so we're just going to add some decorations to the front, to our front cover where we've got the leather. We use a different leather, or we use lizard scales. We've just changed that to a lizard scales now. Interesting. back to the bowl leather and I'll just paint the bowl leather onto the blizzard scales. We'll do it that way. Alright, so I've got my brush. I've got a new layer. If I've got the paint layer selected, that'll just replace it. But with my new layer and my brush, I can just start painting on whatever. I think we just had like some weird check mark type symbols on the front there. So we'll do something like that. various eye in the middle. And you can get all kinds of neat effects. So you get to paint directly on, you get to slap materials on different slots. Um, you can go really really deep with this. There's decals, there's all kinds of fun things you can do with the brushes and the materials. Let me see. We can do some particles. Bearing in mind that the zoom back out so these gems all have the same UV so if I add a particle effect to one and break it then it's going to do all of them but let's do it anyway so we'll do a like a fracture no we'll do broken glass so let me go to my gem material pop a new layer on there and start painting with my broken glass particles here which is apparently using a, the bowl leather as as the uh, paint in addition to the particles. Undo that. What if we can use the same paint as a particle? A very faint, um, faint effect there. We'll use aluminum and just tap it there. We're back to brushes. All right. Easy to get lost. All right. So now we've got the aluminum paint. I just tapped once in the middle there, and we've got this aluminum now creating a broken glass over the top of my gems. Uh, we can fracture the metal. That might be fun. So we go to the spine. I've still got my same settings. Again, make a new layer, and I'm just going to hit that. And you see it kind of spider webbing out. We've got a cool broken look now to the spine. Um, painter, you could spend hours and days and weeks and months and years just getting really deep into this and having a lot of fun. Um, but for now, I just want you to explore this far. So get in there, um, start adding different materials to different uh, material channels here in the texture set list. Play with some brushes, play with some patterns um, and some particles. There's just all kinds of stuff in here. We got alphas, so we could we could stamp on to the let's do it to the hide again. Do it on the top. And I can stamp on anything I want. I think there's a substance logo in here. Might be fun. Let's use this medieval cross. We go back to a regular brush with that cross, crank the size up. You can see I can just stamp those there. Um, one of the note we want to do, so we've got this by default is in a 3D view, which is fun. Um, you can also view 
the 3D and 2D side by side or just 2D and this gives us a side by side preview of our actual UV layout. So you can straighten things up and, or line them up nicely. I'm going to put this cross just say in each corner and get more of a pixel perfect kind of a layout in 2D. So now the top's got those on it. Get creepy and put a handprint on it, make it really big. So again, tons and tons and tons of fun things to do. Uh, explore and have fun. Then when you're done creating all that, um, let's talk about exporting. So we've got a cool-ish. Okay, yeah, it's kind of a mess right now. We've got a cool um, model with paint on it here. And what we want to do is export it. Now the FBX exists already in here and we're not going to export the FBX with the materials. Uh, we're just going to grab the FBX that we used before when we go back into Unity or something else and use the materials that we just created. So I'm going to go up here to File and I'm just going to export the textures. And again, same kind of a, a similar output as we saw in Alchemist and some other things. I'm going to leave this default. It's going to go into the export folder of Substance Painter in my documents. Um, use the metallic roughness. I want this to be in PNGs. And it's going to size them based on each texture set size, which we set to 2K earlier. Uh, we've got all of our materials here. And so the gem material is going to get a base color roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. Let's go ahead and again, we can turn off the emissive, or we'll just leave it on. It won't hurt us. We can just leave those default. Um, again, there's another number of uh, export settings here. So we can use the Unity Universal Render Pipeline, HD Pipeline, um, probably the Universal Metallic Standard is going to be the most common for what we've been doing. So go back to settings here and it didn't change much here. So um, using just pretty much the default settings, we can say we're going to get a total of 36 textures output, um, six for each of the materials and just go ahead and say export. And that's going to give us all the PNGs at the 2048, the 2K size that we want uh, that we can use in later projects. Those will each be based on that UV that we originally pulled in um, off the, or that we applied to it in the in the 3D program. So it'll be based on this shape, but we're going to get one for each material. So the trim, the spine, the gems, all of that. I guess we could have baked it all into one, um, but that's not the way we had it broken out in Painter. So, all right, it's all exported. We're good to go. Um, and we've got some cool stuff for final projects.